Father, I thank you for um, our family, uh, families. <clears throat> now, Lord, um, I don't know who this message is for tonight, but you've put uh, an unbelievable burden that I cannot bear myself. Um, you've put an unbelievable message that I cannot share myself. Lord Jesus, um, our lives are but a vapor in connection, in comparison to the unbelievable glory that we're going to see in literally moments time. Father, I pray that eternity would be stamped on our eyeballs and that our vision would only see um, that we would only see the incomprehensible beauty of the King of Kings whose eyes are like fire his hair white as snow his feet as burnished bronze that causes the disciple who loved you to fall down as dead because of the immense beauty and holiness that it is a sheer miracle that we are not consumed at your breath. Father, forgive us for our for when the flesh decides to take the ascendancy, when when our flesh wants to get in the way. I'm sorry, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to live another day. To with the privilege of being a witness of your kingdom to your redemption to your salvation you've saved us you've bought us you've redeemed us you've made us new creations that's a privilege we don't we're not deserving of it but you have said i want this one i want that one. this one was born in israel that one was born here that one's born here these are my people god we 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 don't have enough words to tell you thank you and then use this broken vessel to communicate what you're trying to tell the people in Jesus name amen um, so so um, 2nd Corinthians 3 and 4 um, What is our lives, guys? A vapor. Vapor. Guys, when you put fire on the snow that is outside, what happens to the snow? I mean, how quick does it melt? Fast. Just less than a second. Just it becomes from snow to water. Um, no, I'm being quiet. So... I'm just going to read verse 12, uh, 2 Corinthians 3. Therefore, having such a hope, Jesus is our living hope, we use great boldness. We're not like Moses. And Moses is like the um, the old disposition. In fact, the, uh, in verse 14, the word covenant, I'm reading from the HTSB. Uh, King James calls it uh, disposition. Uh, testament as they call it but it's really the old disposition the old man in, in a sense it can mean covenant old testament the law but it's everything of this earth we are not like moses who used to put a veil over his face so that the israelites could not stare at the end of what was fading away but their minds were closed for to this day at the reading of the old covenant the same veil remains it is not lifted do you guys understand that that veil is your human flesh your human understanding your human thoughts your human reasoning human emotions well this is not what i would do i don't care what you would do and it's not me saying i don't care it's what god says i don't care what you would do 
Don't you know that your thoughts are not my thoughts? Isaiah 55. Your ways are not my ways. My ways are higher than yours. My thoughts are higher than yours. Do you understand that it is not lifted, but it is set aside only in Christ? If your eyes and your ears and your mouth and your heart and your desire are not of Jesus Christ and being the central theme of everything, live and move and have your being, then you are only looking at here in the flesh. Later in this book, he says, we regarded Christ according to the flesh, but thus now we regard him no longer. Well, if it's not in the flesh, it's of the Spirit. Spirit. Jesus Christ lives in you. In the flesh? No. In the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. So, even to this day, whenever Moses is read, or the old disposition, do this, get repercussion, don't do this, get blessing, what have you, a veil lies over their hearts. My dad used to have a saying, it was in Arabic, the equivalent is, you put a potato, you get a potato. You put a bean, get a bean. Are we putting in Christ and getting out Christ? Guys, Jesus didn't live a extravagant life. He lived a simple one. He put in his life and he got out life. And we sang it with King of Kings. The church of Christ was born. He put in the divine. If Jesus was not God, then his death means nothing for us. And all of Christendom is a total failure. But because he is God, he put in his life. And now we got a church that not even the gates of hell can stand. Whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. And you can see as Elisha prayed, show him the angels. This is in 2 Kings. I believe. First king, excuse me. And he saw the whole heavenly army. Do you see the armies of God about you? Do you walk as if the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ lives in you? So that one can kill you, slap you, hit you, curse you, reprove you, slander you, gossip about you. And you can say, thank you, Jesus. I get to suffer for your name. Now, I'll, I'll get to that. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Folks, you're free to mess up. You're free to fail. You're free to, to suffer. You're free to rejoice. You're free. I'm not saying you're free to have license. You're not bound by the limitations of this earth. You are, in fact, more constrained by the love of God. So if God calls you to do something, oh God, this doesn't make any sense. But it's not that which is of the flesh. Galatians 5, those are the works of the flesh. And I can't, I don't have enough time to give you examples of how God has called people into the mission field that looks totally preposterous. We, and guilty, I'm going to confess, when John Allen Chow <coughs> felt called to go to the Sentinelese people, the last, one of the last, actually, the, it, is a, it is a tribe in North Sentinel Island off the coast of India that has been uncontacted. Maybe one or two people in all of its history. And people were like, look, this is foolish. And we were judging, I, I speak for myself, was judging according to, well, he disobeyed the law, but he went there in faith, but then he was killed and he was alone. And God said, did he do it for my name's sake? As far as we know, we are not to judge the spiritual. And I had to repent. He did in faith. Who am I to judge another master servant? He did it seeing 
Jesus. He went seeing Jesus. He went upon the call of Jesus. And he gave his life upon the call of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there's freedom. He went following the Spirit of the Lord. Folks, he's free. He's in the presence of the Lord. We all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. And this is from the Lord who is the Spirit. Your transformation is not based on you. It's based on Him in you. The more you seek the face of Jesus, as Thomas the Kempis said in, in the very first paragraph of the book, Imitation of Christ, he says that if you are to get any sort of enlightenment, study the life of Jesus and seek to copy that. That's a paraphrase. In fact, let me read it. He says this. He who follows me walks not in darkness, says the Lord. John 8, 12. By these words of Christ, we are advised, we are advised to imitate his life and habits. He who follows me. Now that's a Hebrewism. In Hebrew, you'd say, literally, are you chasing after me? Psalm 23 is the same language where he says, I'll follow the Lord all the days of my life. Yirdef achare Yahweh. I will chase, I will chase, I will run. There's a song, Shane and Shane do. Running after you. I will chase with everything you have. All the days of your life. Chase Children. me. He who chases me walks not in darkness. It's not a passive, yeah, I love Jesus. and yeah. No, yeah, I went to church on Sunday or Saturday or whatever. No, this is this is anguish. Do you follow after him? Willing to suffer loss to gain all of him? It may be like fair sunshine, one of the folks of the Covenanters said to his friend, you will have a glorious exit and I will die in a wee bed of pickle straw. Which means I'm going to die of old age in bed. Either way, it doesn't matter. Your life is not yours. He says, we're advised to imitate his life and habits if we wish to truly be enlightened and free from all blindness of heart. Let our chief effort, therefore, be to study the life of Jesus Christ. Folks, we're coming into a persecution. This is the word of the Lord. This is, uh, this is something that I uh, did not expect to say. This is a message that goes out to whoever needs to hear it. And um, we are entering a season of persecution. Are you ready to be transformed? Helen Ewan, she was only 22, was the track that broke me. Uh, it's a second crisis. Convicted me that I was not being transformed by the life of Christ into the life of Christ. You are being transformed from one thing into another thing. A caterpillar doesn't just get transformed into a... It was a caterpillar. Your life was hid with Christ and God. You were dead in Adam. And now you are in Christ. That means you must have been something. What did Jesus save you from? Do you know the, the misery you were in? Do you know your deadness that you were in? Do you have a salvation story? Psalms, I will proclaim your salvation all the day. Do you know where you say it, where you came from? Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you are? Does he save you today? Does he save you tomorrow? Did he save you yesterday? That's the transforming power of Jesus Christ and the cross and blood. If you don't have a story for that, then Jesus, I need you. God forbid we're lukewarm. Now we have this treasure in clay jars. Chapter 4, verse 7. So that this extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. 
Guys, are you ready to... <laughs> if God was to call you home right now, can you stand before that judgment seat where he has a whole from start to finish of your life and say okay so I have a full record of everything you've done I'm not saying go and start doing this is be between you and the Lord and again these messages go out can you say Lord I was faithful 100% in good conscience, can you say that? I don't know. But that's a challenge. Lord, I love Elizabeth Fry who had uh, lived, she lived her life spending and being spent of her own self for the sake of the horrible prison uh, practices in England, debtors' prisons where you owed money you couldn't pay and you were locked up being forced to pay with without income uh, it's just ridiculous but, but the, the, the jailer said you're not going in there ma'am let me in she said ma'am we're not letting you in let me in I'm going to those women okay and they looked like animals the women looked like animals and she went in and they were like clawing at her and screaming shouting she said, okay. And she was a sort of dainty person. She was a Quaker. She says, all right now. Come, come, let's sit. And she starts reading the Bible and sharing about God and Jesus. Women said, okay, I want it. And they were all silent. And she, almost single-handedly, reformed the prison system. Took some people to eternity with her. Provided where she could. And she struggled with depression. She was not perfect. Because she struggled with depression, God used her life. You think you're a failure? Because you're a failure, God will use you. You think you can't move? Because you struggle either with weight or your back? Because of that, God will do amazing things through you if your heart is submitted and say, okay, Lord, I don't have a lot, but my heart's willing. Clay jars. So that the extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. You think you want some boasting? God forbid. If you really love God, allow him to break you and use you as he wants, not you. We are pressured in every way, not crushed perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted but not abandoned we are struck down but not destroyed oh Jesus to you be the glory we always carry the death of Jesus in our body can you just reflect on that the death of Jesus do you guys understand what that looks like a, a bloodied piece of meat that I, uh, Colossians 124 fill up in me the sufferings of Christ May be complete in me. Get me in the game, coach, is what he's saying. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who live are always giving over, given over to death because of Jesus. So that Jesus' life may also be revealed in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith in keeping with what is written, I believe, therefore I speak. We also believe, and therefore we speak. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and present us with you. I'm going to skip down. Verse 16. Therefore we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. Folks, our momentary, momentary light affliction is produced. Paul, who got lashed 195 times, stoned, shipwrecked, beaten, persecuted, kicked out, had people com complain, slander, accused. He said, he 
says this is a momentary light affliction. It's producing in, a, in us an absolutely, absolutely incomparable Ooh. eternal weight of glory. We do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. But what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Your life, your job, your health. Mm -hmm. uh, Leanne and I were talking, uh, you know, we have issues with uh, pituitary tumor come back. And uh, she made the statement, if I go, if, if the Lord decides to take me home and uh, I'll be glad I'll be I'll be with the Lord. I'll be, I mean, be sad for you and the kids. The Lord hit me. And I looked at her. I said, no. If God calls you home, it would not be good for you to be here. It would be good for us not to have you. Do you guys understand you're on borrowed time? It's not your time. What are you doing with it? Are you arguing with each other? Or if you have a resolution, or excuse me, a fight, you quit, seek, seek quickly to gain the other's heart. But don't you know that if you save her brother, you've, you've saved him from, I mean, you've, it's a huge blessing to pull somebody from the pit. When you don't give the devil an opportunity and you prevent the sun going down from your anger. Folks, what are you living for? Are you seeking to be transformed day to day? The Lord gave a very specific word. We're entering the season of persecution. Are you ready to be transformed? Guys, this, this is a very fearsome message, but it's God's word. Do with it what you will. The Lord is coming. Behold, I'm coming soon. Are you ready? Do you love his appearing? He says, I'm only coming to those who love my appearing. If you don't love his appearing, you need to get right with him. Because he doesn't come as a lamb. He comes as a king. Vanquishing his foes. Kicking Satan in the teeth and sending them back to hell. Realizing that every part of you that is not submitted to him, he's going to burn. He wants a spotless bride. This is to those who are not ready to receive it. This is this is a call to repent. To say, God, I've not I've not been doing what who you I've not been who you need me to be, and I can't get there. Let me encourage you, friend. That's where grace comes in. Where he says, and the reason why it's grace is because it cost God everything. It cost him his life for your sake. There is infinite grace. I love this I love the song. Marvelous, uh, marvelous grace, where it's a uh, marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured. There where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. If you think you're okay, you're not. But the moment you say, God, I'm not okay. Oh God, I need you. Not just at one time, but every day, I need you. This is, this is the encouragement. Is God has infinite grace for you. If you come to Him and say, Oh God, I'm broken. I need you. He'll pour it out. Be specific with Him. Guys, be, this is very important. Very, very important. General repentance brings general grace. Specific repentance brings specific grace and forgiveness. Lord, I'm really struggling with XYZ and, and broad, I'm using broad strokes here. With this XYZ problem. Guys, he's got big shoulders. I have a son who shared with me, Daddy, there are times I'm, I use profanity with the Lord. This is pretty uh, challenging, but let me share with you. Let him correct you. Because this is a person, this is a relationship. That's what the cross was for. For your mess. Stop holding on to your mess. Take the trash out and say, Lord, I, I, I can't do this. Be real with him. I had a wrong done to me years ago. 
I said, God, I'm so angry. I said, this blankety blank person doing blankety blank this. And, and I, I told him the truth, how I felt. I said, God, I, I'm so angry. And he said to me, you want to curse? Well, yeah. He said, he said, one, I got big shoulders. But two, is it going to make you feel any better? And immediately I said, well, I guess not. Guys, he's got big shoulders. Go to him. Guys, stop trying to play the fake. Just stop. It's glass. He sees it. Be real. The blood of Jesus is enough. Father in heaven, I thank you for your precious son's blood that brings freedom. Brings us to the cross. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the tears, for the uglies, for your love and mercy. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you hold us. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you don't tolerate sin, but you forgive sin. If we ask for forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us. We ask your forgiveness for our human failures. Where we think, we think we know. I'm sorry, Lord, for when we think we know. We ask that you would open our hearts to be transformed, and to rejoice at all times in our waking, in our weeping. In Jesus' name, amen.